grocery store, I'm shopping for a gift for that ex special. <coughs> and despite my many polite objections, the man behind the jewelry counter continues with his sandwich, telling me that if I really love her, I'll buy her a diamond. Because as he puts it, it's the gift that lasts a lifetime. But exactly how long is it? I wanted to ask him if this lifetime he spoke of referred to the average American lifespan of 78 years, or that of someone from Angola. Lucky to see age 40. I wanted to ask him if this lifetime included the millions of men, women, and children piled like bad crops along the killing fields of African diamond wars. Or the Fula, of people forced to leave the land of their ancestors in order to survive in a world that values these rocks more than them. I wanted to ask him if this lifetime was located in Sierra Leone, where the government enforced rape of daughters by their fathers under threats of execution still rings in children's ears, or if this lifetime was Wangaris, a Congolese mother of three, whose breasts were cut off by diamond raiders so she would never again be able to feed her crying young. I wanted to ask him how we dare flaunt these blood-tinted pink gems of lack and loss around necks and wrists still hunted by our own ropes and chains, or how our stars of song and screen complain so far fat rings while using the phrase my brother in an overtly ironic six-letter word way that starts with an N and screams I own you, but most of all I wanted to know how it felt to operate an auction where the investment was dictated by the color and the cut, like finely lined muscles, glistening in the sun, ice by sweat, rolling down arms, oiled and placed on well-lit platforms to be bought and sold to the highest bidder, because this selling of stones is nothing more than a continuation of a 3,000-year tradition of selling slaves, and I wanted to ask him all of this. But all I could muster as I turned to walk away was, I think you mean diamonds are forever.